Lacey here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Tarot by the Book. This week I have randomly selected from my collection the 78 Tarot Mythical and we are going to be diving in. Before we do though, let me just share with you in case you're new here what Tarot by the Book is all about. So this is a weekly series on my channel where I randomly select a deck from my collection and I pull the deck out, I show you guys some of the cards, I work with the guidebook. So what I'll do is I'll give us a three card week ahead spread um, using three card positions. I just said three card twice, but you get the idea. And then after I've given you an intuitive reading um, based on my first impressions, looking at the artwork, looking at the cards and just sort of taking everything in, then we dive in together to the guidebook and we read what it has to say. And we sort of compare and contrast the two. So this lets you really see the way a deck works when it's actually being put out on the table, being used in a reading. It lets you see some of the images and it also lets you see how the deck creator or creators um, how their perspective comes into play when you go to read with this deck. I really, really like the Tarot Myth 78 Tarot Mythical. I am not normally a fan of collaborative art decks, but this one absolutely captured my heart. I was lucky enough to be able to get this at um, the Northwest Tarot Symposium in 2019, and so I was able to get my copy signed by Katie Welsh and um, by Trish... Um, why do I always forget her last name? Trish Sullivan. Um, and also, so these are the signatures that they did by hand. And then the actual inside of the box has um, pre-printed signatures of all 70, I think it's 79 artists that contribute to the deck, um, which is one of the things that makes it just so, so special is that there is absolutely a different artist for every single card in this deck. Um, now there's several 78 tarot decks and there's probably gonna be one that just really lands for you or maybe all of them do. But this is the one that captured my heart. Um, there is, at the time of filming this, there is 78 Tarot Mythical, 78 Tarot Elemental, 78 Tarot Nautical, 78 Tarot Carnival, and I believe the original 78 Tarot. And I, I think the next one, I, what is the next one called? Um, I can't remember now, actually, what the next one is called. But I think it's about... Um, saving the earth I think I think I think um but anyway there's a lot of different art styles in this deck but this has a mythological or mythical as it the title would suggest theme to it I think the cards are absolutely beautifully produced and printed they are gilded there is beautiful gold gilding on the back of the cards as well um and the guidebook's pretty meaty because in the guidebook we actually get the artist interpretation of the card and then Trish Sullivan has actually done the writing to tie it all together um, with an, some additional information as well. So you sort of get the cohesive writing from Trish as well as each individual artist has, has provided some information as well. So it's really quite well done, but I really love working with this deck. So it is a little bigger than a standard deck, but I have bigger hands, so I don't find that to be too much of a challenge. Just keep that in mind. I think I do feel like I want to hit this deck today with a little bit of sage. I don't always. It's like when I'm doing the tarot by the book, sometimes I hit it with sage, sometimes I don't. It's purely by feel. Isn't that interesting? But normally when I do um, client readings, I always do this first. It's just kind of interesting to see when I feel like it's needed and when I don't um, from more of a group reading perspective. Hit it with a little Palo Santo and then we're gonna get started. So if you are gonna be focusing on your week ahead, that's all you need to do as you're watching me shuffle. And if you're gonna be focusing on a particular situation, then focus on that situation while you watch me shuffle. Either is good, um, just as long as you're present and you're really focused on the reading at hand. The three card positions I'm gonna be using are the same every single week, and they are energy, for the energy of the week, or if you're thinking about a particular situation, it'll be the energy of that situation. The second card will be the obstacles, so we'll be viewing that card in its shadowy aspect. And the third position is advice. So we're gonna be looking at our advice for the week ahead, or if you're looking at a situation, it'll be the advice for your situation. And there's usually advice kind of woven throughout, but that third card is like about tangible actions to take, things to focus on, that sort of thing. Um, Whereas the other cards, sometimes advice comes through as well as the message. I've just noticed. All right. I'm going to do one more rifle shuffle, and then I'll cut the deck and draw our cards, and we'll get started. Energy of the week. Ooh, 
Ooh, meditation. This is one of the bonus cards in this deck. The obstacle. Seven of wands. And the advice. Death. Big energy this week. Whew. All right, so just going to set these cards to the side and we're going to dive in. So I'm going to read these first intuitively. So we've drawn meditation as our energy of the week. And this tells me that really our week is going to be about finding and refinding and finding again our center, the place that we feel settled, the way that we feel calm. It's going to be on in focusing in a way on self-care and taking care of ourselves. It's going to be a, a week where it's going to be important to stay grounded in what is rather than um, focusing on what we don't know, can't know, don't fully understand, um, aren't sure of. The meditation card tells us it's important to stay mindful and present. That means we need to be in the present. That means that throughout the week, it's going to be especially important to notice when you're breathing, notice when you're clenching your muscles or your shoulders are tight, and just to really be in each moment. If you are doing or going anywhere, then try to be present for those activities rather than checked out. Try to really be in the moment, be really present. For me, meditation is very much about being aware of everything going on around you. So not being so complacent, not being so distracted. So really try to hold that energy throughout the week, but be aware that this is going to be a week where this kind of energy is important and also where we may be put in a position to have to be in this space. Perhaps things are gonna come our way this week where it's we know it's important to stay centered. We know it's important to be in the eye of the storm and to just let everything you know, that's going on around us, be around us, and not to take on more than what is our responsibility to take on. So really be aware of what's your responsibility and what's not your responsibility this week. When we're looking at the obstacle card, so we're looking at this card as if it was drawn reversed, but I don't draw them reversed. The shadowed position is the obstacle position in this reading. And we have the seven of wands and we have this really this is this looks like a Beauty and the Beast moment to me for some reason. First of all, he looks kind of like the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. And second of all, there's all these people around with literally torches and pitchforks. And you definitely get this idea that like he's very big and they're very small, but there's many of them. And so there's this feeling of kind of being outnumbered. When we're thinking about the obstacle this week, the Seven of Wands is somebody who holds their ground, who isn't afraid to stand up to a, a crowd, who isn't afraid to be that lone voice, that dissenting voice. There sometimes can be even a David and Goliath kind of uh, energy here where um, you may feel very outnumbered, but you feel like you're really on your higher ground. But remember, we're, we've pulled this card in the shadow this week. And that tells me that you might want to be wary of the tendency this week to perhaps feel over defensive, to feel like people are out to get you or a situation is um, maybe to give into conspiracy theories, right? To feel like a situation is much more... Um, insidious than it perhaps really is. It's going to be important to to balance that out and I think that's one of the reasons why we're being given the meditation card as a reminder that it's going to be important to stay grounded and centered and mindful this week. You may find that you have a tendency to just generally be quick to um, get your back up this week. Be quick to feel like you need to defend yourself when maybe you're not being attacked in the first place. So really keep in mind that perspective is going to be super important. You're going to want to be aware when these situations crop up or when you feel your back getting up. You may want to be aware that that energy this week is an obstacle, which means it could be out of balance, which means if your back is getting up, it may not be warranting a response right away. It may need a little more stillness. Again, the meditation card. It may need a little more quiet, a little more time to sort of pull back, get some perspective, breathe, figure out if what you're reacting to is what's actually happening or if you're responding to energy that's built up in your life right now, other situations, ghosts from relationships past, that sort of thing. So really remember to stay present and in the moment, in the moment. And even the coloration of these cards is so different. There's like literally no repeating colors pretty much between these two. And you can get the feeling that this is a very calm and peaceful energy. And this is a very like fighting kind of um, back up against the wall kind of energy. And these two will not play nicely together. But being in this space will help you cope when these moments crop up. 
Let's take a look at our advice for the week, which is the death card. And we have this figure sort of ferrying across a body of water, which is a very common image for the transition of death. But death ultimately is about letting go of what doesn't serve us any longer. And so there may be some things that you're hesitant to let go of, maybe routines or structure, or maybe people that are in your life that have just been giving you headaches. My dog is literally like scratching a little nest for herself right next to me. <laughs> Shayla, lay down, baby. Hi, lay down. Lay down. Good girl. Good girl. That was very distracting, but really cute at the same time. Anyway, so death is our, death being our advice tells us that we need to notice when we have that tendency to grip too tightly or to hold on to something that is no longer serving us and to allow it to lovingly leave. Allow yourself to lovingly release it. Allow yourself to be in that moment where it's okay for things to be different. It's okay to move into a bit of the unknown. Death is a transition from one way of life to another way of life and or, or a way of death, I guess, more accurately. But but the symbology of death is that there is this transition, transitionary sort of period. And so this week you may find yourself feeling so unsettled, partly because like we know this unsettled energy, this kind of easily triggered, easily upset, easily angered energy is, is a part of our week this week. And so death tells us that there may be some things we're clinging too tightly to. There may be some things that need to be released. There may need to be a shift in thinking to allow you to really move into this next phase to let the old phase, the old normal fade away and really consciously allow yourself to move into a new phase and a new routine and a new way of life. So keep keep in mind and remember this is just a week ahead reading, right? These energies sound very, very big and they may feel very big in the moment, but these will shift, right? give it another week or another week and things will start to shift. But this coming week is going to challenge you, I think, a lot in feeling um, restricted or feeling, you know, feeling like you, you just are being made to be a little bit uncomfortable. And this is why the meditation card is such a keen reminder of how important it is to stay present so that what you're responding to as you move through the week is the truth and not a buildup of previous weeks or previous happenings or previous experiences, but you're actually responding in the moment and really consciously know or pay attention to those things that are you're being sort of asked to release and asked to let go of. Hopefully that resonates for you. We're going to move these just slightly over to the side and we're going to dive into our little white book. This is quite a chunk of a little white book um, and there actually are for full color images in here, which I think is super great. Um, so let's dive into meditation first. I think it should be right near the front of the deck and it is. Um, so here's what this card has to say. This was our energy of the week. So this card's um, artwork is by Zindi. Oh, it says on the in the book too. Um, Zindi S.D. Nielsen. She sits in the center of it all, in perfect balance and with inner peace. The feeling of spring when everything is fresh and renewed. Everything is coming to life around her and inside her. Connected to Mother Earth, flowers are growing around her, keeping her grounded. Everything is standing still. In this moment, there is no time and there are no boundaries. She's traveling far and beyond in her thoughts. All there is here, all there is rather, is here and now. It feels like magic as she enters the state of meditation. We, and this, this next bit is by Trish Sullivan. We include a meditation card in our decks to help create a focal point for you, to help you clarify your intent before consulting our tarot decks for advice. You can meditate on the card while keeping it separate from the main deck or include it within the deck to be drawn during your reading. When this card appears in your reading, it is a reminder to take some time for you, some peace and quiet to let you think and meditate. This card suggests that you need to calm your mind and bring some serenity to your world. Advising that even when the world is at its busiest, you should remember to take care of yourself. Make self-care a part of your routine. The meditation card is unique to 78 Tarot Mythical and is not found elsewhere. Mythological association is fairy. Oh, she's got wings. I hadn't even really noticed. <laughs> um, a fairy is a magical spirit that is found in a variety of European mythological myth mythology excuse me, and folklore. The term fairy is often applied to a wide range of small folk, including goblins, small demons, etc., but a fairy is also a separate creature, most often in English mythology. 
These are enchanting creatures, usually considered the highest of the wee folk, and are capable of gentility and grace, but equally capable of mischief, even cruelty. The graceful, enlightened characteristics of fairies in classical depictions of them meant that we thought that a meditative fairy would be stunning for this card. Um, I think that's a beautiful card and a beautiful message, and I do think that's what was coming through for me intuitively, was this idea of needing to find calm, to stay centered, to stay grounded, and I think that definitely came through both in the intuitive reading and the by-the-book reading. Let's take a look now at the Seven of Wands. Uh, what order are we in? There we go, Seven. Okay, the Seven of Wands. Oh, keywords, was there keywords for the meditation card? I hadn't noticed, let's see. Um, oh yes, calm, grounding yourself and focus, yeah. Okay, so for the Seven of Wands, the keywords are tenacity, courage, endurance, element, fire, and the astrological associations are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Um, in Greek mythology, oh, this is the card story by Jody Horn. Jody Horn is the artist of this card. In Greek mythology, the Minotaur was a creature created by the coupling of the Cretan bull and Pasiphae as a punishment to King Minos by Poseidon. I chose the Minotaur to represent my card, the Seven of Swords, because of his struggle to retain his humanity despite being regarded as a beast. Oh my God, that's so funny. And cursed to crave only human flesh. The element of fire is captured in the color of the sunset and the torches of the angry mob. Um, Trish Sullivan says, a scared mob is whipped up into a frenzy. They will not allow any more of their maidens to be sacrificed to the Minotaur and stand ready to attack the monster before them. But he sought none of this. His need for human flesh, a necessity to survive as a cursed creature, a punishment locked away in the labyrinth, it is his home and he will defend it and himself. Get ready for a day when you feel as though everything is going wrong and everyone is against you. You're being challenged and how. Don't bow to it, but instead draw on your reserves of tenacity and stand your ground. Start thinking creatively. Work out new ways to jump the hurdles before you. Facing this is just one more trial to beat. You can do it. Um, before we get into the mythology of the Minotaur real quick, that um, energy, again, if we're looking at this as the obstacle card, telling you to stand up for yourself, stand your ground, is definitely the message of the Seven of Wands in the upright. I read it the way that I read it in reverse, as a need to perhaps not be so quick to be defensive and to, to stand up for yourself, it may not be necessary. Instead, really stay grounded. If it is necessary, don't be afraid to do it, and I want to make that clear, but really be clear and sure that it is necessary so that you're not just jumping at shadows. It's sort of how I'm viewing it from an obstacle point of view, okay? So mythology of uh, the Minotaur. The Minotaur is a monster of Greek mythology, a creature fe created to punish a human. Minos had stolen a bull from Poseidon, so the angry god made Pasiphae, his wife, fall in love with it. The resulting child was half bull, half human, with a need for human flesh. Minos locked the Minotaur away in a labyrinth, sacrificing village folk to sate his hunger, and he was eventually killed by the Theseus. The reveled nature excuse me, the reviled nature of the Minotaur is a pathetic story of constant defense when viewed from his perspective. So he made an appropriate choice for this card. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's spot on with what I was getting at. Let's take a look now at the death card. And this again was our advice card. And so this artwork is by Chris Malador, Maladore. The keywords are endings and beginnings, rebirth, transition, and the element is air. The astrological association of the death card here is Libra. Libra for the death card? Why does that seem wrong to me? If somebody knows astrology, like, I don't know why that's giving me pause. Was it Scorpio that I thought was death? Hmm. I'm curious about that. That, one's, that one didn't quite line up the way that I... Because Libra I associate with justice, so I'm curious... I'm curious. If you have an opinion on that, share your thoughts down below because that caught me off guard. Okay, the the card story by Chris Malador, Maladore. With all the things that feel like finality, we often look back and see them more as a stepping stone to something further. This card represents a look into those changes we take on in life, no matter how daunting, and reminds us to see the transition within them into something new. Life can bring us many challenges and endings, and the sadness that follows can truly be a healing exercise. In this deck, we tap into the story of Charon, the ferryman of Greek, I don't know if it's Charon or Charon, um, the ferryman of Greek mythology. He transports a soul into the next stage of its path down the river Styx. He reminds us to allow those cycles that come to us, that come at us as they are quite natural to pay our dues and to just maybe appreciate a sunrise, knowing that it may be our last for quite some time. <clears throat> 
Trish says, regardless of the swirling waters and, and motion of the river Styx, Charon is calm, the perfect guide to navigate through this and take his passengers safely to a better world. It's time to prune the dead wood and, let, and get rid of what no longer is necessary to you. Let go of attitudes and habits that hold you back. Say goodbye to the past, set yourself adrift, and sail away from it, freeing yourself to start a new life as you focus on what is essential to you right now. Charon, also known as Charon with a K, is the infamous ferryman in Greek mythology who carries the souls of the dead into Hades. The dead were buried with a coin in their mouth, sometimes believed to be on their eyes, as his fare, as he would navigate the arduous trip through the rivers that separated the land of the living from the realm of the dead. Given the way in which he aids in the transition of the dead from their earthly body to their new place within Hades, he was a perfect choice for this card. Agreed. Um, I think that everything about that echoed what I had to say from an intuitive perspective. I don't think there was a lot there to add. Death really is about letting go of that dead wood of what's no longer serving you. I hope that these messages are resonating for you. I would love to hear your feedback either right away if you really felt like you these messages hit home for you or come back to this after a week and let me know how how did it play out for you. Let everybody else know in the comments how did it play out for you. Did you see where this energy was um, re relevant or resonant for you? Let us know. I'm super curious. Remember as always that if you would like to book a reading with me you can do that over at supportivetarot.com. Remember to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.